This video will be about whether we are on a prison planet or not. And what I'm doing right now is I'm putting it live on Lolita Astrology. And I'm about to go live. And I'm also recording it here on my laptop just in case it cuts out on Facebook. So I can see that some people are coming on to um, the Lolita Astrology page and the comments are going to come in there. And I think I can add people, but I think this is a really important conversation because Pluto is stationing today. And as Pluto stations, you'll start to feel the heaviness of that planet now. The station effect means that it is moving from the appearance of being retrograde, and many planets have been retrograde for um, some time now, and it will move into what appears to be direct motion at 26 degrees Capricorn. So I can see that people are getting on, and you can write in the comments if you want to be in this video, apparently I can bring you onto the video with me, or you can just listen, but you'll have to let me know on the Facebook Live if you want to be brought into the video. So when Pluto, which is a transgenerational planet, stations direct, it has that heaviness of the feeling of Pluto, which in the solar system is malevolent, is destructive, is ruthless, rip, ripping away anything that you're holding on to or attached to. So just given that we are in a solar system with a planet that searches to destroy everything in your life is really telling to me, <laughs> okay? I'm going, well, what is the purpose of that? You know, what is the purpose of having everything ruthlessly ripped away from you? Well, I don't want to do this discussion with assumptions because all we make in this realm is assumptions based on many different spiritual texts and the way that gurus and saints have told us that we should live. But I would say you should watch the video I did with Kira called His Dark Materials. Yeah, I could be breaking up David, which is why I'm recording this also on my laptop. Because this is generally what goes on for me, is when I try and do a live event or I put up a Zoom call, it gets taken down. So yeah, I'll be breaking up, but I am making a recording of this also on my laptop. So watch his dark materials uh, that did stay up on YouTube. And also, please watch Defunding the Matrix, because both of those really bring up those questions of whether we're in some kind of malevolent realm, which is possible, and that all the things that you do here that make you think that your soul is going to like grow and evolve and somehow eventually rise into a higher dimension. I actually truly believe at this point, having been on this journey with all of you, that that that, that whole matrix happens again and again and again. So what I realized was this is the eighth time I've done this matrix. And in astrology, we know that the lunation cycle is how many times you've actually done the same exact thing. So for instance, when you're a crescent moon, when you're a crescent moon, um, you're beginning something that you will do eight more times. Um, when you're a balsamic phase moon, you're finishing something that you have already done seven times. And I can see that um, my internet is not stable because this is what goes on when I try and do a Facebook uh, live is I get 
interference from, from people. Um, so yeah, it's freezing up, David, but don't worry, I'm still recording it on my laptop so everyone will be able to hear this if I can get it posted. So the other really interesting thing about this planet is so we have this Pluto stationing. It's a destroyer type of energy and when it stations, it moves direct across potentially many of your personal planets. And if Pluto is moving across your personal planets, you will feel like you are in hell and the underworld. And when I have clients where that is happening, say Pluto's moving across their natal Saturn, um, they really feel in the throes of hell and death and having to let go of everything. And some people are even born with torturous planets like a Mars conjunct Pluto or a Mars square Pluto. And I try to work out their whole life with them, like somehow things are going to, you know, help them grow and evolve. And I can't do that as an astrologer anymore. I won't do that because now I have looked at this for long enough and seen people's charts where both of their siblings died of addiction their son, uh, his best friend, was shot in the face when he was a teenager. Um, and then his son, the, you know, the son became an addict and then had a baby with a mother who was an addict. And, you know, p children that were abused in foster care. <laughs> I mean, like the level of things that I have heard in terms of like the malefic content on this planet and as an astrologer, I cannot counsel anyone anymore to be like, oh, don't worry. The good guys are here now and they're going to take care of it. And we're going to move into a different geometry, call it the Christic geometry or whatever. But to me, I am still looking at that anytime there is a hierarchy of your higher self, you're a slave. Okay. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that anymore. So whatever is going on here, I'm not doing this anymore. That's me going, okay, well, there's some higher dimensions that are enjoying my experience of, of being zapped by 5G weapons and my, and my hair falling out and my lungs having inflammation. Oh, that's so good for growth. You know, those higher dimensions are watching you like you're some kind of a gaming technology. <laughs> <laughs> F off, okay? I will not be a whore for the higher dimensions. So whatever is going on here, and I'm actually not sure that there are higher dimensions. I am now starting to really be with um, that this is just a synthetic reality and we're some kind of dream of some warden of this prison who is playing with us. So if there is anything that's going on in this realm, it's torture, okay? Are there good days? Yeah, oh my gosh. And the thing about this realm is that it's beautiful. It's incredibly beautiful. I mean, I'm looking out at the fall foliage here in Vermont with my horses eating their hay. And I, I would say I wouldn't even be able to make this video if I did not live in so much beauty. But, you know, many of my clients live in torture and they come to me for sessions going, how can I make it better? Will there be love in my life? Will anyone ever come into my life? And I'm looking at their chart going, well, you have Chiron in the seventh house. <laughs> so, yeah, you can magnetize someone into your life and they'll probably be deeply wounded, outcast, codependent relationship. And I see people, you know, continually saying, Oh, I, I just broke up again. Please pray for me. But I know this is part of my soul evolution. Well, that's something I've been writing about also since um, April. Who are you praying to? Who's eating that trauma of your breakup? <laughs> Who? <laughs> and I really believe that the architect or entity of this realm is demonic. So I really truly believe that the architect of this realm is some kind of trauma-eating, soul-eater, um, malevolent being. 
So thanks for being here. If anybody wants to come on, just write. I can bring you on if you want to talk. You just write in the comments that you want to come on. So I see Kristen's on, Jackie's on, um, David's on. And, and, and I would love to hear from you. And if you don't want to be on video, just write a comment of your thoughts. But um, so the other thing that I'm going to talk about, which really triggered and terrified some people from the Defunding the Matrix video, is like I read the whole Voyagers material in January just this year. So I, I was not aware of the Voyagers material. And I saw this incredible like history of the the realm here, right? That I know that the entity of the realm is freezing me. I know, but I'm making a recording on my laptop too. I knew this was going to be difficult because after I put up the defunding matrix um, video and all like the patent numbers and all the different technologies that I was talking about, <laughs> I got a message on on face book, which is the metaverse, that a general from the military was following me. And I thought, well, that's interesting that he like came out and like directly told me he was following me instead of just listening to my thoughts by satellite and scalar waves. So anyways, I was like, here's the thing that's amazing about realizing that we're probably in a demonic realm in some kind of quarantine trickster realm is that once you realize that, to me, I know we're immortal spiritual beings. So then I'm like, well, what other weird crap can go on? Maybe I'll go back to the general and tell him I'm following him too. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it is so weird here that I start to play with reality. I start to play with reality and go, well, let's see how much weaponry they can throw at me. You know, it's, it's amazing. And I've heard from clients and I really can't reveal like the amount of technology and weaponry that has been installed in our bodies. It's amazing. And how that has gotten installed. In fact, I'm going to say this, that um, it's not guaranteed that I will do a journey to the void with you because if I get the feeling from talking to you that you have way too many implants and attachments to this realm, I won't do it with you. So I have already turned down one client after questioning her. And when I started to ask, I kept getting this like feeling like there was interference, just like there is now, um, you know, with the Facebook freezing up and everything. And so I said to her, because this is generally what goes on, have you been to any Dr. J becoming supernatural events? <laughs> and she said, oh yeah, I've been to at least three. Oh, I've actually been to four. So I was like, well, so you got all those weird codes and downloads and visualizations and meditations from this guy? And she was like, yeah. And it wasn't until after the second one that I started to feel like those supernatural feelings. Well, folks, the other thing about this realm is who are the police of this realm? The police aren't the weird high technologists. The police are the ones who are getting downloads and codes and leading massive seminars for people to give them those weird imprints so that they feel endlessly like, oh, we're creating new earth. Oh, we can become supernatural here. And when I actually work with them, you know, with that client, They've got as many health problems as ever. Maybe um, their children have all the children problems now <laughs> that are going on where they don't know what their gender is and they, and they have shrinking penises so that they'll always be in a sexual misery template. And I'm going, oh yeah, it's getting so much better since Dr. Joe came on the scene, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Oh, geez. I mean... And the other thing is people really hate astrologers at this point. So I want to tell you that any astrologer that I read their weird stuff, I'm just going, what are you talking about? There is no real astrology out there anymore. And I, I mentioned, I'm just I'm going to go like Tony Sayers and just call people out. So I mentioned uh, Natalie Alba, who's got 
hundreds of thousands of people following her with tons of different codes that you can get from her with her star seed astrology. And if you look at her page, it's nothing but weird synthetic digital art. She's not a human. She's not going to talk to anyone. And everyone who comes on her page just says, oh, wonderful, thank you. Because her predictions, and they are predictions, is that we're all just doing so much better now. We're all growing and evolving and coming into our 5D bodies. And I tell you, friends, if you haven't looked at Natalie Alba's page, have a look. It is pure synthetic stuff. So um, what I find is the secret police of this realm do not even know that they are the police. That's the other thing. I don't think the police of this realm are like that military general. I think the police of this realm are the people who are doing these weird codes and downloads um, and always telling you we're ascending, we're going to new earth. And I think that's a template that plays here again and again and again. So let's talk about the soul review because my clients who, who, who have died they went right to this light place and they got a soul review. And when you get the soul review, some guide or whatever is standing there saying, well, you know, if you don't come back, you'll break your mother's heart. One of my clients actually told me that. She wrote it in the comments. So feel free to read the comments really carefully on my Lolita Caroli page and my Lolita Astrology page. What goes on here is that is pure attachment addiction to trauma. If you're getting a soul review and saying, well, you know, you really could fix that with your brother who died as an addict and you decide to come back because you're going to fix that with your brother who died as an addict. What is that? That is a complete demonic trick. Because none of that allows for you to make a free decision of whether to be here. So in the clients that I've had who have had these death experiences and get the review, all of it is based on shame and guilt. All of it is based on, well, you know, you had wronged so-and-so and you can come back and fix that with so-and-so. It is all based on guilt. Now, what architect of the realm is going to guilt you out into coming back? That's why I am offering the, the journey to the void. And that is what I'm doing now. In fact, I've tried to do some astrology sessions with new clients. And I end up just saying to them, look, I can see all the trauma in your chart. For me to just repeat like the torture that you've been through and find out whether you were uh, sexually molested in foster care. I mean, it's, it's truly astounding, folks. And if you look back at the fossil record of this realm, 99% of everything that has ever been here is now extinct. We've had at least four extinctions of the human race. And so you got to wonder who's eating that death and destruction? Who's eating that as Pluto stations direct today? Who's going to eat the trauma from 100 people that die in a geoengineered event? Who is, who is eating that? Yeah. Hi, John and Gloria. Thanks for joining. Yeah. So, so Kristen's saying, so the so it's just gaslighting. It's gaslighting is what goes on here, which is why I have a client who is very dear to me who had a horrible event happen to her when she was three years old. And, and yes, I'm breaking up all the time, Gloriana. I'm recording it on my laptop too. I didn't, I did not expect that, that I would be able to really do this today. So this is a huge, um, this is a huge thing to even try and do an event because when I've tried to do these events from Practical Magic Permaculture, um, yeah, we we couldn't add anybody. I it was breaking up. So even doing it at 7 a.m. when my internet is actually the absolute best, it's really hard for me um, because, because obviously, like the technology that I shared 
um, that Richard Lighthouse was talking about in the live video that I did yesterday, which went perfectly at the same time. Um, we're on the radar. We're under surveillance all the time. There, there are surveillance devices that have been known, at least patented since the 1960s, that they're not just reading our frequency. They can actually figure out what our thoughts are. So they know exactly who I am. They know I've divorced myself from all the other realms that I'm not doing. Yeah, Pluto stations today, Jackie. Pluto is stationing right now, which is why I'm doing this video right now. Um, and, and so they know exactly um, what is going on in the thoughts of your head and don't think that they don't. They know exactly who I am. That's why I always get taken up part in the line of every airport and fully body searched and swabbed and everything. John, you want to join? I'm going to put you in, John. So um, if you want to come on and talk, go ahead. I'm, I'm putting John on right now and I listen. And this video is also if I can add you because I'm trying to add you right now, John, to the video. It may or may not work. And I thought about putting up a Zoom link, but actually um, I've done that before too and nobody can get on, no matter how many times I try to admit you. But that tells you something. That is how powerful we are, okay? What's amazing about the souls who are here, <laughs> think about it, like we are so astounding because if your soul can be in this matrix, which is completely demonic, then what happens is we really, we're not evolving, we're just being traumatized, but we start to have great senses of humor like yesterday. Somebody said, well, if all these technologies and scalar waves and microwaves work and are available to read our, our thoughts and our brains, why can't I get HughesNet so I can watch a movie? <laughs> like, well, the inmates of this prison realm don't get to use the technologies, which is why when Kevin Hoyt came to talk to me at the Freedom Festival, he's running for governor, and he's doing all the same thing I used to do back with with Stephen Greer and all the free technologies would be released. Folks, this goes on and on and has been going on at least since Atlantis when we had every technology that there was. Yo, we're going to release the technologies. Oh, we're going to have free technology. Well, not if you're in a prison, folks. Um, John, did you want to say something? Oh, okay. And so... Michelle, do you want to join? I'll send some invites. Some people don't want to join. Some people just want to listen. So some kind of executive order um, was obviously signed by the person in the White House that legally allows this surveillance. So even though Richard um, Lighthouse, who I made the live video yesterday, said there have been court cases against subliminal acoustic manipulation, voice to skull technology. Now all surveillance is legal. Now, if it's as above, so below. If it is as above, so below, and Pluto is stationing today, and this is a malevolent planet of hell in the underworld that is ruthlessly destroying. Well, how is it that surveillance is allowed? <laughs> How is it that causing humans to become transhumans that have luciferase in their blood system so that they can be tracked not and stop, that only happens in a prison realm. And I know all the 5D people are going to go, oh, Lolita, you just have to get on the right timeline. Folks, you know what? With the effing right timeline, okay? <laughs> I am so done with that. As I've showed you again and again, <laughs> I live in a beautiful paradise that I created. And the surveillance that's happening right now and the interference that's happening right now, trying to even communicate and the amount of censorship that goes on, trying to even get a video, shows me if it's as above, so below, 
we're in some kind of a prison realm. And you can gaslight yourself until eternity going, oh, but it's going to get better by 2024 or whatever. The Christic spiral is going to unfold. And then I realized that that's a whole other hierarchy that is another slavery template that the Christic spiral is going to unfold. I'm just like, my gosh, because the people who are using that Voyager's material I have found are extremely misleading to my clients, telling them to just download and to connect with your galactic family. Don't worry, you're more galactic than Earth-based. And the moment I start hearing that, I'm going, oh boy, that's an escapist, 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 carrot all the time. Oh, just connect with your galactic. Your higher self will know what to do. And I'm going, I have heard enough of that. Truly, people are suffering. And the more that we suffer from waiting for some Christic spiral to unfold, and it never does, and it never does, and it never does, and all these alleged codes and downloads are coming in, and you're just wondering how you're going to get a tomato that doesn't have a technology on it. And what I also wanted to say during this time is, yeah, it's freezing again and again. So people are, you know, you can get on, you can get off, but I am recording it on my laptop. So, okay, so I'm, I'm reading something that happened in Iceland. So, oh, very interesting. So when the executive orders are going through in these various countries, they pair that with a terrorist event to distract us. So obviously a, a weather event just happened in Florida. And so I did think during this period when Mars is trining um, Saturn, Saturn is going to go direct, I think, um, very soon. And then we're going to have an eclipse while Mars is trining Saturn. These malefic planets are going to create more and more scary events so that different kinds of government agencies can make these surveillance things um, go through. Okay, so interesting. So my video is not freezing in Iceland, <laughs> in nice land, <laughs> because only the U.S. citizens really get hit very heavily, as far as I know, with the censorship. We are so censored here. It's a, well, maybe Canada's pretty bad, too. <laughs> um, so, so I wanted to talk about when you participate in one of these... Um, ascension type of things. And I've done Sandra Walters. I've done all of these weird courseworks with the Voyagers and so forth. What I also think is that your profound beauty and intelligence is actually being hijacked by the demonic realm. So I, this really landed to me with one of my clients told me that they had participated in the Lisa Renee stuff for years and they were told that they had to stay within the container. They couldn't talk outside of the container. They had to stay within the container to bring about all that um, ascension glossary, energetic synthesis stuff. And within the container, there were, of course, a lot of dramas and things that happened. And then my clients, uh, several of whom are work, work, have worked with the Lisa Renee stuff, told me that what weirdly happened was that drama within the container started to play out on the world scene. And that's what I think goes on here, folks, is the artificial intelligence that runs this realm with the demonics is not intelligent. <laughs> I actually think that whenever we do like an energetic synthesis thing or a Joe Dispenza thing or a starseed astrology with some of those um, very metaverse type of digital art astrologers, I actually think your brilliance gets downloaded to the mainframe of this artificial realm and the demonics use it. So I actually think that everything that was done in the Ascension Glossary, in Voyagers, in all of that, was of course then used by the architect of this realm, the AI, because it's not very intelligent without us. 
So that's where it is. Once you start to recognize and, and see that we might be in a prison realm and that we are beautiful golden beings that are being used for their trauma, which is, which is called louche, okay? That energy of fear or trauma or, you know, a huge weather event crossing your path and hundreds of people now being homeless and displaced, that is a feeding program. That's why those cataclysms go on. I don't think anything is natural here. I don't think anything is natural here. In fact, even the beauty that we see, as far as I know, the Fibonacci sequence is an unnatural sequence. And that what that does is it creates a lot of beautiful things. Um, and I've been playing with that because I live in a really beautiful area. The more I withdraw from this matrix, the more beauty it gives me. Then I go to another lake and there's nobody there. And I've been posting pictures of the lakes. There's not a soul alive because I realize the matrix is trying to suck me in. It's trying to lure me into a, like a more beautiful realm, a more amazing realm, a more... Um, splendid lake with nobody but me and the loons. And that happened just again yesterday. Just yesterday. I was out on the lake all by myself. The loons were calling. There was an eagle soaring above. And I thought, my gosh, the maker of this matrix really doesn't want me to leave. So I'm starting to play with it that way. I'm starting to play with it like how how much can I press the buttons of this weird codependent entity that creates this realm? Because this realm is dependent on us believing it's beautiful and choosing to come back again in our life review because you want to see grandma again, don't you? You want to see grandma, so come on back. And this time you can be her mother and your souls will evolve. But you know what? Within the solar system, the statistical analysis that you can make of every single chart is that person is definitely going to suffer. That person is definitely going to suffer. And so I'm going, is suffering a path to evolution? Is suffering a path to evolution or are in we? We're, we're in a demonic realm where suffering feeds something. That suffering feeds the architect of this realm. So I'm not suicidal about this. I also want you to know that I'm not playing with it. I'm like, how weird can it be when I start looking around and I'm even looking at the trees and going, my gosh, I'm not sure that any of this incredible beauty that I'm being presented with right now is not a simulation. And when you start to play with it that way, um, it can get really weird. And that is actually the first time that I journeyed to the void. I want to talk about that. I've been on for 33 minutes um, The first time I did a journey to the void, it was completely accidental. I saw the movie What Dreams May Come in 1995 or 1996, and Robin Williams was in that movie. And in that movie, um, the wife put herself in the river Styx when she died. She went to hell because she felt like she deserved it. So she put herself in, in these like floating dead bodies. And I can hear some people talking, so... I don't know if you're saying something to me, you got to write it in the comments so that I can bring you on. Um, so she chose the river sticks with these heads and like horrible scenes of, of screaming people. And it was like really gross. Watch what dreams may come. And then Robin Williams chose this like technicolor, beautiful place, right? because that's what he wanted and that's what he believed he deserved. Well, after watching that dream, something happened deep within me and I was standing in the hallway of, uh, I was actually in the entrance of an Italian restaurant. It was a fancy place in New York and I suddenly swooned and I went into the void. 
and I swooned and my consciousness actually left and went directly to the void. And when I was in the void at that time, it felt like the most ecstatic love that I have ever experienced. And I have never experienced that here. But that void, which the yogis call samadhi, is this ecstatic, beautiful love. And then when I slowly started to come out of the void and I was trying to get back in my body, like I'm trying to get my consciousness back in my body, I still felt that level of love, that ecstatic feeling inside of me came back with me. And that experience has stayed with me of the void is actually where we're from. The void is this place of complete ecstatic love. And I've been there twice again um, since then. And then that ended about 2007. And what's interesting, when I was talking to my friend Laura, she said, yeah, I haven't had any recent experiences like that either. And I'm starting to recognize that we're getting more into the metaverse now so that we're having fewer and fewer of those kind of ecstatic void experiences, which I would call samadhi. Um, and so what I really want to encourage you to do is start to take your consciousness back to that black fabric of space and defund this matrix. That's that's really all I'm interested in offering. I mean, I can do your transits and tell you some hell is on the way because Pluto's going to go over the United States, natal Pluto between December 13th and December 24th when that new, you know, that executive order for the digital currencies is going to take effect. But I would say um, that's all I can do for you now. I cannot say to you ever again, oh, stay here, your soul is evolving. No, that is not in my repertoire, nor is it in my repertoire as a, an astrologer to say, oh, just keep saying positive things and visualize a new earth and you'll be doing your mission. You'll be bringing about new earth. No, I absolutely know that that's bullshit now and that we repeat the same thing again and again and again and again. And every time we come here, we're on mission impossible to create new earth. And that's what I do believe that liberation is. I actually believe that the liberation from this planet, which was classical yoga, classical yoga is about getting the soul out of matter. I don't know if anyone even knows what yoga is anymore because now people think it's exercise on a plastic mat. But yoga originally was to get your soul out of matter, to liberate yourself from this prison. And I'm going, well, how is it that now there's like we're waiting for messiahs or we're waiting for new earth? No, the original yoga was to get your soul out of this human spacesuit, which suffers in this demonic realm. And how else do we know that it's a prison? Okay. Well, every time you come here, your memory is wiped. <laughs> You get electroshock between lifetimes, so you can't remember that you're an immortal spiritual being. And then when you get here, the archetypes are horrible. Like just look at Sisyphus, which is one of one of the um, one of the main archetypes. I think Sisyphus is an asteroid, and if you have Sisyphus in your chart, you're gonna roll that rock uphill. And every time you get to the, the rock, to the top of the hill, it's going to roll back down. And then Sisyphus would roll that rock back up the hill. And it'd get to the top of the hill and roll back down. That's an asteroid. So if you get that asteroid, like, good luck, folks. <laughs> Come back again. See if you can evolve again. Come, Keep coming back. Oh my gosh. So I know that, see, I'm one of those astrologers. I recently got a client. Um, 
I know she's going to watch this later, a new client, she's like, so-and-so from Elephant Journal, who is an astrologer, said, you're the best astrologer in the world. And I was like, yeah, I am, but nobody listens to me. I got six people listening to my video. <laughs> but I thank you because you folks are so brave to even consider that we're in a prison and we're in a demonic realm because everything about that People are going to tell you, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> Please don't pray for me because whoever the architect of this realm is, <laughs> I'm not taking their assistance anymore. <laughs> My gosh. I don't. Please leave me alone. Okay, that's why I don't have my birthday information because I got all these weird people I don't even know sending me these long prayers for my birthday. I'm like, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> so if you know me, <laughs> I, t I just find all this really funny at this point. I find this whole realm hysterical. And this might be really triggering to you because you've been trying lifetime after lifetime after lifetime to create new earth. <laughs> Good, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not doing a journey to the void though. I've already said that anyone who's calling on these weird demonic guides and higher selves, like forget it folks. That's, oh, that's something else I want to talk about. Boy, am I really going to be in trouble this time? <laughs> So I have clients who are, you know, considered like these very high level Sophiac transmissions, okay? <laughs> They're my clients. And I have had one particular client who cannot do her work unless her three guides are talking to her and they're talking to her in light language and she gets codes and everything. And the moment that her guides weren't talking to her, she had like a near nervous breakdown. She had to have a session with me and say, oh my gosh, my guides left me. They left me for almost a full day and I didn't know what to do. I was so scared. I was so lost. And I was like, you know what? That is terrifying that you live your life based on some weird who knows what, telling you in light language all the day long what to do. And you've been like that since you were a child. So she was also freaked out because they've always been with her since she was a child. And so now I'm like, oh, maybe the satellite went down that day and your voice of God technology was not coming through. <laughs> you know, folks, pay attention. If your guides suddenly aren't talking to you, that's because the satellite went down. <laughs> so anyways, I'm not calling on any guides and I'm not going to do sessions for people who do call on guides. Listen to me. Do not come to me for a session if you're talking to galactics. Do not come to me for a session if you're in part of some container that's making new geometries because the AI of this realm, you are its intelligence. You are creating another matrix. That's what's going on. All right. You are creating another matrix because artificial intelligence is not intelligent. If you're downloading codes and light language and geometries, the luciferic thing that runs this realm is sucking that up and making another matrix. So I won't talk to anyone like that and you can pay me, but I won't give you a journey to the void, which is why I'm being very clear about this folks. Why? Because I know AI is trying to hijack my journey to the void. <laughs> All right. There's nothing that, that can uh, be stopped. The AI from continually sourcing you, the surveillance is happening nonstop. And I don't even think that the new patent numbers and so forth um, are, are new. I think that there has always been a technology here surveilling you and taking your intelligence. So Kristen is saying, why are we so addicted to this pain and weird gain? Why not just defund it? Why not realize that, you know, you tell, everyone's got like some horror story about their own parents 
no matter what good parent that you think you are, if you're in this realm, it's very likely that you're going to have a disaster with your own child. I really, I, I have this experience. No matter what good of a girlfriend you are, or what good of a horse owner you are, you're in a demonic realm. And my horses are being hit by 5G weapons all the time, to the point where Curly could hardly breathe all year long. And my neighbors up the road had to put both of their horses down. So no matter how good you are here, folks, no matter how good you are, that you want your child to have the perfect life, my gosh, do you not see what these kids are up against? And yet people are bringing these kids going, oh, this is a new star child. They have all the DNA strands. They're going to bring about new earth. Well, talk to me in 30 years when your child sees what is unfolding here. Talk to me in 30 years because I have some experience <laughs> at this point with raising children and, and being a school teacher and having to leave all of that because there is literally nothing you can do in this realm that is not going to lead to someone else's imprisonment. That's the other thing. Like, if I keep horses, which I love my horses, in this realm, and I do everything I can to provide beautiful pasture, the best hay, a wonderful paddock, a beautiful environment on a dirt road, they're hit with 5G weapons. It's like, if I agree back to come back to this realm, and you know, my little dog and my cat and my horses all come back because those are my daemons. Remember, we talked about these soul friends that come with you from His Dark Materials um, discussion that I did with Kira. His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman talks about how the animals come with you kind of like your power animal or kind of like your soul friend, which was called the D-A-E-M-O-N, the daemon in this realm. Well, that creature suffers too. And I found that one of the most surprising and amazing things of Philip Pullman's trilogy for children's books was if I bring Curly back to this realm, my horse, my beautiful golden horse, he's going to suffer again all the weird weapons that go on here. So as I am letting my animals go, I am telling them go right to the void, go right to the black fabric of space. Do not come back here for me, do not look for me here. Um, and I also, I wanna end this um, conversation because we've been on for almost 50 minutes at this point. In the void, even though you go alone and you do not journey with guides and ancestors or anything like that, when I did die, I went to the void and the consciousness that is my partner, Claude, was there. He didn't have a body. He was a consciousness. He's in the void. So one thing I want you to tell uh, to realize about this this realm also is it's a trick. It's a trick that the only place you're going to find your beloved is here. No, that is a trick. They're going to say to you at the at the end of life, you know, upon your death, soul review. Oh, you'll never see your partner if you don't come back to earth. No, no, friends. All consciousnesses, all consciousnesses are in the void. All of them. Yeah, <laughs> Kristen, you just left your job as a teacher too. It's getting impossible, right? I, it's really getting impossible. I can't teach yoga anymore. There's no way I can go to that weird techno gym and all the baloney. Yeah, I've given up my career also. But what's interesting is because my intelligence is what creates this realm, I am the creator of this matrix, I am and so are you. The more I withdraw from it, the more I see through it, the more I defund this matrix, the richer and more depth to my soul I feel. 
Like I really feel my soul is singing and happy now that I'm stopped trying to be worthy of my mission here. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Forget it. I don't want to hear abandoned shit. Okay, darlings. Um, so it, we've been on for 50 minutes. It, does anyone want to make a comment or something I have missed that I, that I really should talk about? All right, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to stop the recording.